If I was restarting my fitness journey all the way back from day one, here is what I would do. Keeping in mind that what works for one person doesn't always work for the next, but here are some insights and key things that I learned that I would have loved to implement along the way. Let's get right in. First up, I would tell myself and remind myself every single day that it takes time. There are no shortcuts that work. There are no hacks and tricks, whatever that can cut down the time. Because what I always like to say is the faster you get results, more often than not, the shorter those results stick around. I would try my absolute best to not put so much pressure and stress on myself when I don't feel like I'm making a ton of progress every day or seeing really, really fast results. Even though this is something that is very, very hard to do, a lot of times we're just too hard on ourselves. And no matter what you do, no matter how you go about it, it will take time. There's literally no way around it, so the faster you accept this, the better off you'll be. The next thing I would do is prioritize how I feel over how I look. Let me explain. There is absolutely nothing wrong with motivation from seeing results. You should get remotivated every time you think you're seeing progress, physical progress, right? However, you're more likely to start feeling different, feeling better, quicker, then you are gonna see physical changes, physical results. So I think recognizing this and noticing this helps you stay in it longer and hopefully helps you avoid that burnout when you feel like you're just not looking any different and you wanna give up because you think you're not doing anything, not seeing any progress. It's been a week, it's been two weeks, I don't see much different. Well, how do you feel? Also, there is nothing wrong from wanting to either lose weight or be on any sort of fitness journey for aesthetic reasons, for looking a certain way. There's nothing wrong with that. However, it helps if you do have motive from different areas. My hope would be that that's not the only reason you would want to be on this journey. And if you can pull motivation and reasons, you know, your why from multiple different areas, it's just gonna help you keep going and help you avoid that burnout and stick around for the long run. Start writing in a journal, right? Like, how do you feel? How does this workout make you feel? How do you feel on this day compared to this day? Day six, I feel this way. Day 26, I feel this way. And then you compare them. And remember, I used to feel so much shittier than I currently do. It's amazing how different you can feel when you are consistent for a week, two weeks, three weeks. So really, really do your best to pay attention to how you feel mentally, physically, etc. Your energy levels, all of that. And then next, pay attention to, you know, your physical progress. Because that will happen, but it'll probably happen later. Pumpkin spice latte, of course. The next thing I would do is try everything. What I mean by this is that you learn so, so, so much from trial and error. I was someone who in the beginning, I didn't really know how to work out, right? I worked out some in high school, not a ton in college. And then the end of college is when I really started gaining weight. So it had been years since I've been to a gym or even worked out regularly. So I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where to start. And what I wish I did was just start Googling, researching, looking up different types of workouts, what they are, and just make a massive list. What is Pilates? What does it look like? What is bar? What is hit? What is yoga? What does weightlifting involve? What different types of cardio is there? Etc. There are so many different types of workouts. That's just naming a few general categories. But once I had this big list of all these different options, right, because there are so many options and different ways of being active, I would just start trying them. Monday, I would try bar. Tuesday, I would try weightlifting. Wednesday, I would try this cardio, maybe Thursday, this cardio, right? I would just start trying everything because as you go, you're obviously gonna learn what you like, what you don't like, what you enjoy, what you maybe would enjoy. Maybe I would wanna do this once a week, but like this three times a week. You're gonna start learning so much about yourself. And when you find what you enjoy, that is what's gonna help you make a habit out of it. Because habits are created and best stick when they are easy and convenient. And no, I don't mean easy as if like the workout is really easy for you. No, I mean easy the fact that, okay, maybe you enjoy it. It's easier to get you to do it, to find that motivation and get you to work out because it's less of a mental strain. It's easier on you mentally to do it because you know you enjoy it or just maybe kind of enjoy it. It's okay if you're not absolutely in love with a workout. Sometimes it's hard to be, but if it's something you might kind of enjoy, it's gonna stick around a lot easier and better and longer. The next thing I would do, or wouldn't do, I should say, is I would not try any sort of diet. Now this 
goes for any sort of fad diet or any sort of cutting this food group or that food group. Of course, if you have to limit a certain category or a certain something or other due to allergies or, you know, moral reasons, like you don't eat meat or, you know, you don't consume dairy, different things like that, this may or may not apply to you, but just hear me out. When I very, very first started trying to lose weight, I, I was like, what do I eat? I don't know how to start eating healthy, right? And I also didn't really do my research, but what I automatically went to, I was like, you know, I only know a few people who are vegan or have tried to be vegan before, and they're all skinny. Maybe I should cut meat. Maybe I should eat more of a vegan diet. And you know what? That didn't work for me. Remember, being vegan doesn't mean healthy. It can, oh, of course it can, but any diet or way of eating can be healthy. However, within a vegan diet, you can sell french fries. And french fries are not the enemy, but it's just an example of, you know, maybe a greasy food that's not so healthy. You have to do at least a little bit of research and not pull a me and just be like, well, I have this one friend that's skinny and they eat this way, so like, maybe I'll try that. Like, that's just not, that's not how it works. And I don't know how I came to this conclusion, but I thought eating meat was bad, like bad for you. And you know, you hear these things about, you know, red meat and this and this can cause this and this. And of course there are claims that are fully true, fully factual. But for some reason I was just like, you know, maybe I should stop eating meat. But why? I have never cut meat or anything for any specific reason. So like, why would I start now when I'm trying to get in shape? This was also me who didn't realize how important protein is for you. And this goes for everyone, not just people that do eat meat. If you don't, Protein is so important for you, and if you don't eat meat, I'm sure you know there are so many other sources you can get protein from. I personally like to eat all foods in all food groups. And once I realized, like, okay, you can do that, you just have to make smarter, healthier options and really just eat well-rounded. And I accepted that I don't have to go all in and eat all the veggies and, you know, cut this and this and this all at once. I just slowly started making swaps. I slowly started incorporating more whole foods, more vegetables, more fruits just in my day to day. And by adding more of the good, I just naturally ate less of the bad. And I do pride myself even today on still eating a very well-rounded diet. Of course I eat out. Of course I love ice cream and all those good things. And I do eat those on a weekly basis, but not a daily basis. I'm not a huge chip girl. Like I'll snack on other things that might be a little better for me, for example. But don't get caught up so much in changing your eating habits drastically. Just like with everything, it's really a slow day by day, decision by decision thing. Take how you normally eat and what you like to eat and just start <laughs> doing better, honestly. Incorporating better things. Try not to make it too complicated. I think that is what I struggled with a lot is I made eating way too complicated and it does not have to be. Food can be a very complicated topic and hard for so many different reasons for so many different people, but just try not to overcomplicate it is I guess kind of what I'm trying to say. Another thing about food, the next thing that I would try to think about, remind myself and just know on the daily is that you are in control. You know, I am in control. I cannot necessarily speak for people with a bad relationship with food and the fact that I don't have any credentials other than my own experience. You know, I'm not certified in anything. So of course, take this all with a grain of salt, just like the rest of the video. My relationship with food is not perfect, but it has come a long way. But I do really like some of these mindset approaches. Number one, you are in control, right? The food will be there tomorrow. You don't have to eat the whole sleeve of Oreos right now because why would you, right? Why would you really have to? It will be there tomorrow. You can have some now, you can have some tomorrow. You don't really need to finish it all like you feel like you might. And if you think, oh, I need to eat all these cookies so I can start fresh tomorrow, how many times have you done that? Does it actually work? Probably not. And if you feel personally attacked, I'm sorry, but sometimes you just need to be called out. I've done it before. I'm definitely guilty of that. But eating a whole bag of chips and a whole box of cookies and whatever just so you can start fresh tomorrow is just a load of BS. Because you're gonna do that over and over and over. That's something we gotta get rid of. And I know that goes deeper than what I'm saying. Sometimes it's hard, you can't just be like, Morgan, I can't just like stop. It's a larger issue than that. And that's why I'm saying I can't fully speak on it. Cause like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a coach. I'm not a whatever. I, I can't like fully help you through that, but I'm just trying to remind you of these things lightly. The other mindset I really like is thinking about things as a choice. So it's not that you can't eat something. It's that you don't, you choose not to. Remember you're in control, you choose to not eat that, not do that. For example, I don't eat ice cream every night and it's because I choose not to. It's not because I can't have it every night. And of course, not in a restrictive way. We don't do that. I said every night because I do eat ice cream, but I don't eat it every single night. It's not good for my stomach. It's not good for my wallet. 
It's not good for a lot of things. And if you want to completely cut certain things out, again, for dietary needs, allergies, morals, whatever, that's okay. Just make sure you're not being restrictive and know that you're, you're choosing to cut it out, right? It is a choice. I don't eat dairy because I choose not to eat dairy. Not I don't eat dairy because there's sugar in this creamer I like, so I can't have it, right? Choosing not to eat something, not not eating something because you can't, I think is huge. A very big thing, if I was starting over from day one, I would have the something is better than nothing mindset over the all or nothing mindset. For example, one 10 minute walk is better than no movement that day. Because if you start thinking that way every day, well you start walking every single day as opposed to doing nothing every single day, it adds up. Something is always better than nothing, and this goes for food too. One serving of veggies a day is better than no servings of veggies a day. You need fiber, you need nutrients. It's good for you. One glass of water is better than no glasses of water. And this always applies in these scenarios. Having this mindset in one area might start helping you have it in the other area, right? You start going on a walk every day, maybe that leads into you doing a workout every day, which leads you into drinking more water every day, which leads you into eating, you know, two servings of vegetables. and then a serving of fruit and then this good food group etc you know stop thinking things have to be all and they have to be perfect because the more sustainable progress and habits start slow and start small and they grow from there another thing I would do if I was starting over would be accept my mistakes this kind of goes with the all-or-nothing mindset it goes with the balance right you can go out and eat with friends while still working at your fitness goals you can have ice cream on a Saturday night without thinking that it's gonna ruin you because it won't. One dinner, one drink, one dessert, it's not gonna ruin you. The only thing is you shouldn't think, I had ice cream tonight, it's fine. I have ice cream again tonight, it's fine. I'm gonna do it again tonight, it's fine. Cause it can be a slippery slope, right? However, you have to be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself and accept your mistakes. You're gonna mess up. And like I said in the very, very beginning, it takes so much time. Mistakes along the way are bound to happen and they're okay. They're not huge setbacks. As long as you refocus, you know your why and you keep up with your healthy habits. You're never gonna be perfect and your journey really goes on forever. Say you wanna lose X amount of pounds, well, once you hit it, you're not done. Your goals might evolve, but you're not done with your, your journey, right? Because if you're done, you're just gonna gain the weight back. You're just gonna revert back to your old self, your old habits, whatever they were. This goes for if you're trying to build muscle, you know, whatever the journey is. You have to accept your mistakes and you have to live. Because the process is gonna take so much longer than the day you, you know, hit the 10 pounds loss mark, for example. And you should celebrate yourself along the way. If you had one full week of consistent workouts and you've never done that before, treat yourself, that's fine. One thing is not gonna ruin you. You just have to accept yourself, be patient, accept your mistakes, and be in it for the long run. Cause that is how sustainability works and that's how you get lasting results. All of these things really. Those are the main things. I love to talk about this. I also have a video about what I wish I knew before starting my fitness journey, which is kind of similar to this one. This was kind of like a spinoff of it. So you should definitely watch that video next if you like this type of video and hearing about this stuff. And I have plenty of other videos talking about all this good stuff after that too. But thank you so much for watching. I am wishing you all the best, rooting for you no matter what your journey looks like and no matter where you are in it. Please subscribe if you have not. This is a big passion of mine and there's always more to come and I hope to see you in my next one.